Hi, and welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, your daily cryptocurrency blockchain aggregated news show on YouTube. Look, look, who's going to be drinking. Look, look, who's going to be smoking. Look, look, who's going to be swearing. Look, look, you have been warned. So look, look, Eric, coming three. Look, look, two. Look, look, one. Bang! Welcome, everyone. Black, white, gay, straight, Christian, Muslim, Jew. My name's Shamar Clark. Welcome to Cryptocurrency Blockchain News, the greatest show on Earth, the greatest show in the multiverse. Greatest show in the multiverse, and we have a great one for you today. All right. I got a great show for you to do. I have a great show for you today. I got a rogue nose hair, so this ought to be fun. Dag on it. This guy just started up about 15 minutes ago. All right, look. Actually, this is more of a show like how I'd have for you like on a Saturday. It's kind of different, right? Anyways, so there's no onboardings. Like there's no government. Uh, anyway, all right. Let's just, I'll tell you what's going on. Bitfury Mining. Bitfury Bitcoin Mining Fund for Institutions. All right. So there's a new fund coming up for institutions. We're going to talk about that. And I'm talking about this because it, it you know, it doesn't really affect us. Actually, it's not even going to really probably affect our money, but just it's interesting, right? Today's a day of hmm, interesting stories. They don't really affect our money, but just make us say, hmm, you know, just get the old noodle going, right? Contemplating stuff. So Bitfury Mining Fund. And then this one, and so the reason I'm bringing this up, this is the one I said I was going to talk about yesterday, but then the, uh, the, the, the Fidelity story came up. So this is a story that Binium sent me and I've known about these guys for a while, but it, it's just insane. And so I'm just going to read it, the title, and then we'll get to the story when we get there. Well, let me straighten myself out here for fuck's sakes. All right. Look, so um, Grayscale offers Ethereum at a 700% premium. Now, don't worry. We'll get there when we get there. Fuck, I got to I don't understand that. I don't understand. I even told the brothers, I was like, I don't understand why these people are doing that. What is happening? And so that's a mind bender as an investor and trader. I've never seen something like that. So we're going to get to that. And then finally, Galaxy Digital. That's our man, Mike Novogratz. Bang. Our favorite Bitcoin maximalist CEO. And he's coming together with Backed. And they're going to offer custody and trading white glove service to um, white glove custody and trading services to institutions. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. All right. So let's begin. And we begin. Bang. So we're not actually talking about any sort of one crypto today. We're just sort of talking about the industry or sort of kind of thing. All right. Let's do a little. All right. What's Bitcoin at? 9871? $9,871? <laughs> okay. All right, hold on. Let me get a quick sip. I'm a little bit of a bad mood this week because I I left a lot of money on the table trading. You know, I left a lot out there. Anyway, I'll show you guys when we get there. Yeah, so I'll show you the true frustrations of a trader. So look, Bitcoin's at $9,871. And when I left you yesterday, it was at $9,795. So we've gone up, uh, what is that? 70, what is that? I don't know, man, about 80 bucks or something like that. Fuck. All right, look, look, top 10 of the day, brothers. You know the story. Usual suspects. Top 10, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tether, XRP, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin SV, Litecoin, Binance Coin, EOS, and Cardano still holding on the number 10. Let's look at market moves of the day. Single digits up to single digits down. Single digits up to single digits, whoops, single digits up to single digits down. Single this up, single this down. Oh, look at you, Zilliqa. Oh, when you ox. All right. Ooh, and Kyber Network. Single this up, single this down. Two. Single this up to single this down. All right. All 
and see who lost money today. You see anything on here you like, go get it because it is on sale. Bye. Top 10, loser of the day, Wax, Hedge Trade, Nervous Network, Swiss Borg, Theta, Maker, Energy, Steam, Flexicoin, and Crypto.com Coin. It's you who made money today. Oh, these are some nice gains. Yes, indeed. Top 10 gators. <coughs> oh. Kyber Network, Loop Ring, Bancor, Zilliqa, Synthetics Network, Horizon, Ave, Digibyte, Ren, and Ox. All right, let's see what the total market cap of the day is. Where are we at here? 280.2. And when I left you yesterday, we're at 278.1. So we've gone up 1.9. Or is that 1. I don't know, 1. something billion dollars. 24 hour volume. Shit, still below. 79.8 in total volume. When I left yesterday, we're at 79.77.2, so we've gone up $2.6 billion in, what's that called? 24-hour uh, volume. All right. One second, guys. Bah! All right. All right, I'm back. All right. So, all right, so that's that. Where were we? We did it all. We did the bang. All right. Right, so let's begin. How we begin? Let's proceed. Bang! All right. There we go. Oh, my stomach was a little eesh right there, so. Here, I tried to go to the bathroom. Now I'm in a better mood. All right, there we go. So look, look. Bitfury to launch Bitcoin mining fund for institutional investors in Japan. Now, does this have anything to do with our money? Not really. Well, not at all, actually. But but what I find, I, I just brought this. Look, look, look. Let's tell you the truth. There are no onboardings today. <laughs> there are no government regulations today. And I could only find one new investment vehicle. So we had nothing to talk about. So I just chose the two best things I could find, okay? So, <laughs> well, the Novogratz thing, everyone's talking about that. So we're going to talk about that. Obviously, we have to talk about that one. That's the big news of the day. So this one, but so the reason I chose this one was, in full disclosure, there wasn't much else to talk about. But also, just that I find it interesting in that this crypto space, distributed ledger technology space, right? It's interesting in that, especially in terms of Bitcoin, right? Or sun, or things like this, where, you know, if you want to invest in Microsoft, right? You either buy the Microsoft share or you don't. Like, that's it. That's the only, uh, I mean, you could buy options on Microsoft shares. You could buy futures on Microsoft shares, whatever, whatever. But it's still just the Microsoft share. The only way to make money off of Microsoft is to use an investment vehicle that uses the the Microsoft share, right? Well, what's interesting <laughs> because about Bitcoin is is well, you can buy a Bitcoin to make money, sure. You can buy the investment vehicles, sure, but these guys are coming out with a new idea of well, instead of making a Bitcoin fund, why don't we make a Bitcoin mining fund? Right? So off the guys who are just mining this stuff. You see what I'm saying? So there's actually two ways. Like if I was an institutional investor, <laughs> I could own I could own shares in in a in a in a regular BTC Bitcoin fund. Whatever kind of fund, right? Mutual fund, whatever. But I can also now I will be able to own shares in the mining of the Bitcoin, right? Anyways, I just found that kind of interesting. I never really thought about it that it's, it's, you know. So there's sort of two angles you can make money off of Bitcoin. And I guess is what I'm trying to say. All right, so let's check it out. Bitfury. Hold on. All right. <clears throat> Bitfury, a cryptocurrency mining and blockchain development firm, 
is planning to launch a BTC mining fund in Japan in July. Katsuya Kono, the head of Bitfury Japan, confirmed the development with Cointelegraph Japan yesterday. Oh, today. Uh, as uncertainty regarding traditional markets amid the coronavirus pandemic continues, investors are increasingly paying attention to Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies as an alternative investment. However, there's not yet been a way for investors in Japan to gain indirect exposure to Bitcoin through crypto-related infrastructure. The new offering will reportedly be the first crypto mining fund in Japan and will initially cater to institutional investors such as family offices. I told you what a family office is. It's a hedge fund, but basically it's their own money in it instead of other people's money. Owner-operated small and medium-sized enterprises and religious corporations. B religious, okay. Before expanding to retail clients. Kono expressed confidence in demand for the project because its yield is different from other products. In order to comply with the Japanese regulations, the fund has established a special purpose company to raise investment. The new fund will be operated by Nippon Angels Investment, which is registered as a financial instruments business operator with Japan's finance watchdog, the Financial Services Agency. Major Japanese law firm Anderson Mori and Tomotsune will serve as advisor. Bitfury previously launched its Bitcoin mining fund for institutional investors in North America market in May. Oh, okay, so they did this in America already. So it's kind of interesting. Hold on, hold on. Um, uh, so just kind of interesting, right? Making money off the mining part of it rather than just the Bitcoin part of it, right? And like I said, well, fuck. You know, so just another way to make some money, right? If you're afraid of, I mean, I guess, I, I mean, I wonder how, it, I'd like to hear more information on it because, uh, you know, is it, is it fluctuate? Because it, you're doing it, you're, you're investing in the mining part. So I don't think, I mean, I'm just guessing. This is pure speculation what I'm about to say. But I don't think it should go by the price of the Bitcoins. It should just go by, well, how much, Bitcoins does this mine produce, right? That should be the the factor of whether it goes up or down, right? How the how much these miners are making or whatever. I don't know. We'll see, man. I don't know, but like I said, I needed I needed to fill a slot for the show, and I thought it was interesting. Just it, this would have been on the Saturday show anyway, so I figured, well, fuck it, let's just do it today. All right, so look, look, let's move on. Bang! Oh, now this one, this <laughs> this shit here. This blows my mind. Binium sent me this. Or, or he tweeted this this weekend. Or sometime. I don't remember when he tweeted it. But recently, the past couple days. And I was just like, what the fuck? Now, let, 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 let's read that title. Grayscale's Ethereum Trust is offering Ethereum at 700% premium. Do you understand what that means? People are buying this thing are buying Ethereum at 700 times the price that you're supposed to buy it, that it is, right? That it is on the spot market. And look, guys, I'm really reading this one it, just because my mind is blown. My mind is blown, and I just don't understand why the fuck these investors are doing this. And I want to, I wanna, when I'm going to read this to you, and I'm going to show you, I mean, it's not like Grayscale is ripping off soccer mom and dad or some senior citizens for their pension fund who don't know any better. Institutions are paying this amount of money. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? I mean, think about how, how bullish you must be. If I'm going to buy Ethereum to go long, hold on, let's go, let's look at some prices. Let, let's chit chat. Let me do a little math here for a second. This is blowing my, it blows my mind. Watch this. So let's see. And Ethereum is $247.31 right now. So these sons of bitches, holy crap, they're paying 700%, right? So they're paying, let's just round down. They're paying about $1,500 in Ethereum. $1,500 for one. Look, dude. 
<laughs> yeah, you're paying fifteen hundred dollars for a two hundred forty seven dollar asset. Yo, you must be bullish like a motherfucker, homeboy. I hope you know something the rest of us don't know because dag on, homie. That so that's why I'm reading the story. In all my years of investing, you know, I mean, I'm just a trader. I'm not actually, you know, this is the first time I'm really investing and holding something. I'm actually just a trader. But I know all about investing and stuff like that and my my family and all that. So I learned from that. But in all my years of all the economic shit I know and markets and everything, I have never seen people voluntarily pay (laughs) 700%. 700% fucking premium look first of all i I haven't heard of anyone had the balls to even try to sell people something (laughs) at 700 percent of you like you know maybe during the dot-com bubble days but we're not there yet and uh so like i said a 247 dollar these people are paying 1500 for them Fuck, I mean, I mean, that means you're bullish like a motherfucker. All right, so let me have a quick sip. And then we'll, we'll get into this. It, this just blows my mind, like. <clears throat> I can't believe the investors are doing it. I can't believe Grayscale has the balls to actually <laughs> price it at that. Like if I'm an investor and Grayscale's like, yeah, I'll sell you an Ethereum for fifteen hundred, it's just like I'd feel offended. Like, oh, you just think I'm a fucking idiot? No, you think I'm you think I'm that fucking stupid? What are you fucking talking about? Right, and Ethereum is two hundred forty seven dollars. All right, you want to charge me two hundred and sixty dollars for it? All right, all right. You got to make a fee. You got to make a little change. Fifteen hundred? Look, dude, now you're insulting me. Now you're insulting me. You know what I'm saying? All right, but it's happening, and so <laughs> let's let's read on, brothers and sisters. And let me tell you something. Don't ever let me catch any of you motherfuckers doing this. <laughs> I will ban you from this channel, motherfucker. Dag on. I'll, you're too stupid. You got to get off my channel. Bang! Get out of here. Banned. Fuck. I'll block all your comments, block all your tweets. Just, this person's crazy. All right, so here we go, guys. I'm not making this up. Here we go. Grayscale Grayscale Investments Ethereum Trust is now selling Ethereum at a premium of 700%. According to the latest data shared by the asset management firm. Yeah, they're the ones that gave us the data. (laughs) They're not hiding it. Nothing. It's not a scam. It's people are really doing this. So listen to this. The increase follows a steady... The increase follows a steady trend of a rising premium up from 220% in February, 2020. So that's when I learned about Grayscale back in like February. I was like, how are these guys getting away with 200%? Um, but I never talked to you guys about it because it was just like, I don't know. I just figured it would be something that would fail. But apparently this fucking company is growing and they just keep raising the premium and people keep buying more. <laughs> I don't understand it. I don't understand why they're doing that. One share of the Grayscale Ethereum trusts sells for $177 at 0.094 Ethereum per share. So look, these people are paying $177. See it right here? $177 to receive 0.09% of an Ethereum. Okay, they're paying $177 to receive 0.09%. 094 of an Ethereum. $177. Remember that number? 177? Motherfucker. Bang. If you just bought an Ethereum on the the market, you would be getting more than well, half an Ethereum. Boy, way more, right? You'd be getting two thirds of an Ethereum. These guys are getting a fraction for $177 a share. Uh, investors are indeed buying Ethereum. At nearly seven times the price for what they should get through the spot through a spot trade. Seven times the price. 
Holy Crowley. I it's it's really quite I, I can't believe it. Like I can't believe they have the balls to actually offer that price and then I can't believe some motherfuckers are out there buying at that price. And so Okay, well, let's move on. The premium has actually risen since April when it was trading at 515 times the price. This itself was a 220% increase from the February 2020. <laughs> oh my gosh. Growth that some of the cryptocurrency community are seeing as extremely positive sign. Look. What do you think, Shamari? What is this, good or bad? Look, guys, I'm not going to bullshit you. I have no idea what to think. Um, I mean, in one in one in one way, I look at it like, well, are these just super Ethereum maximalists, and they just think this, or uh, or are these? Is it? You know, I mean, we just read we read about the thing Ernst and Young is coming in, and all these all these big corporations are building on Ethereum. Is it because of that that they're willing to pay because they're looking for towards the future? I don't know, guys. I think it's insanity. I think it's fucking insanity. Like I said, I can't believe Grayscale has the balls to offer that price. I mean, I tell you, I feel, I'd feel insulted. But then I can't believe people are actually paying for it. And watch this. These are record years. Watch this. Other data that Grayscale has released shows a considerable increase these guys are jacking up prices and they're seeing an increase in the influx of institutional investment remember this, like i said this isn't some company ripping off dumb soccer mom and dad dumb money you know ripping off a bunch of you know senior citizens somewhere who don't know any better you know who can barely think you know dementia and shit no these are look institutional investors smart money so okay let's read on the firm reported a great increase in institutional investment in q3 2019 while the bitcoin trust has grown tenfold since q1 2019 it has also doubled down on these bets having bought more bitcoin than has been mined since the last halving and purchasing almost half of all the ethereum mined in 2020 something is going on with this fucking grayscale thing something is going on and if you're willing to fucking spend 700%, they must, they must be telling these people something. What are you telling an investor to make him go, oh, yeah, really? Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, I'll buy that at 700%. Something's going on. And so I want, you to, I want you to show you, right? We read about this already, right? Grayscale, since the halving, the Bitcoin halving, has bought more Bitcoins, we read about it last week, than all that has been mined since the halving. Right? Since the having, I think it was like uh, 12,000 Bitcoins were mined. Yeah, they bought 18,000 Bitcoins. Like just out of the market. They bought all the mined ones and more. Like if you look at it in terms of numbers, right? And look at this. They have purchased almost half of the Ethereum mined in 2020. What are these guys up to? Why are they on such a buying spree? I don't have the answers. Like, I don't have the answers. I know. Shmoy will tell us the answer. I don't have an answer. But something's going on there, right? I, I, I guess I'm just saying this to maybe get your eyes focused on it, get your minds focused on this. Something's going on on a grayscale where they're buying more than all the Bitcoins mined since the halving, and they have purchased almost half of all Ethereum mined in all of 2020. So these boys are loading up something fierce. Loading up something fierce. And it's not just the load up that's amazing, but the balls that you have to charge your customers 700 times. It'd be like, it'd be like this. Imagine, you know, I don't know. Uh, uh, imagine, I don't know, I don't know. Hold on, let me think of something. Let me think of something. Because this is too stupid. It's just too stupid. All right, it's like imagine I had a cell phone company, right? A cell phone store. Right, a little store where people come in and get their cell phones. Everybody knows the iPhone costs, let's just make up a number, say $1,000, right? Bang, the iPhone is $1,000. Right, and imagine you came into my store and I was like, look, 
Oh, you like that iPhone, do you? All right, give me seven Gs for it. Yeah, 700 times more. Right? Would you do that? You'd be like, fuck. No, nah, dog, what are you talking about? But something's going on where these guys are buying up so much and somehow these investors are... Grayscale is telling them something. They must be telling them something. Like, I know we're charging you a lot, but bang, 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 bang down the road or something because you're just not that stupid. Even dumb money is not that dumb. So, I don't know. I don't have answers for you guys. I just read this because, as you can see, my mind is blown trying to grasp why they're doing this, trying to grasp how Grayscale has the balls to charge it, and trying to grasp how the institutions, why they're doing it, why they're paying that much. <laughs> Okay, so, all right. So, Grayscale, so we're, we're down at the last paragraph now. Let's just get this over with because I don't have an answer, but. So, Grayscale's Bitcoin Trust is by far its most popular investment vehicle. With roughly $3.5 billion under management, it's followed by the Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, and Zcash Trusts. Investors in the trust pay a premium for Grayscale service so that they needn't worry about regulation or custody. So, I understand that part, and that's the part I, I, I also did want to tell you. Grayscale custodies it, and they, uh, you know, and you're all regulatory compliant with Grayscale. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. And that, like I told you, that's fine. If I'm a big mega hedge fund or a family office or something, okay, that's fine. Even if you, even I would even say this for each, if each like each Ethereum I buy, Ethereum is right now two hundred forty-seven dollars. All right. You want to charge me 300 in Ethereum for the management fees and all this and all this? Even that, I mean, I would still feel like I was getting, you know, up the booty. But, you know, if, I mean, if I really thought it was a good investment, fine, fine, fine. An extra 50 bucks per, no problem. But 700%, you're not paying 700% just to have your stuff managed. Uh, so, all right, guys, so I'm just going to leave you with that. I just don't know what the fuck's going on over there, why they're doing it. But I want to know because there's got to be something. There's got to be something happening, and I want to know what it dang on is. As a market guy, you know, we want the info. We want the data. We want to we wanna know all the ins and outs and what the hell's going on back there. And when you're when, – all right, so let's move on. But I, like I just said, last time, last time, when you're charging 700% and people are buying it, something's going on over there. Something is going on. They're promising their people something or something. All right, so let's move on. Bye. And this was the big, big story of the day. So we got to talk about it. Uh, Galaxy, whoops. Galaxy Digital and Backed are launching a Bitcoin trading and custody service for high net worth investors and institutions. Um, so as you know, Backed launched last year. Mm -hmm. With a lot of fanfare. I mean, I was here hyping it. I got to admit, you guys know if you watched my channel last year, I kept telling you how it would be. Uh, you know, I kept thinking, man, it's going to be so great, so great, so great, so great, so great. And the back thing, it's not a failure, but um, it sure ain't living up to the hype. Not even fucking close. You know, uh, backs options. So backed also, back sells futures, physically settled futures, but they also sell options contracts. Yeah, you know how many options contracts are live this month? Zero. Not one. Not one fucking options contract. So, Bact is a bit of a disappointment right now. Um, um, yeah, that's all there is to say about that. And Galaxy Digital, that's Mike Novogratz's um, shop. <clears throat> you know, we talk about him here once in a while. He's a super crypto, he's a super Bitcoin maximalist, but um, but he is from the real world. He is from the real markets, you know, and so that's why I, I will read about what he says every once in a while, because of course, he's going to tell you Bitcoin's going to rule the world. So that part of the stories are a bunch of bullshit. But he also talks about the rest of the market, you know, the custody and the this and the that and the investment vehicles and the regulations and, you know, he's a market guy, so he knows what he's talking about. And so that's when we listen to him. And so as far as his shop goes, his Galaxy Digital, uh, they lost a bunch of money last year. I think um, $13.9 in the fourth quarter. Um, so it's not looking so good over Galaxy Digital. 
as well. Whoa, 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 hold on. Let me, let me, hold on. Let me stop. Let me stop. One part of their their company lost all the money for them. The other parts are making money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't remember which part of their company lost the money, but it's one com- part of that's losing the money. The rest of their company, they have like three other things that are making money. So, and that's like backed, right? The backed futures contracts, yeah, even though it's not much, they're still making money, right? But the back options, yeesh. And that's what I keep telling you guys. I mean, that's what I kind of preached about last night a little bit. Just because a company says they're going to do something doesn't mean market accepts it. Doesn't mean accept it's accepted in the market. Uh, you know, it's a long shot. You come up with an idea, shoot it out there and see if people like it or not. That's it. Right? I showed you about Enron, right? Look at all the things they came out with. Failures. You know, and, and, and so you have to remember that about companies, right? Don't listen to the bullshit about what they tell you they're going to do. Look at what they're actually doing. Right? They always try to sell you the future. No, nah, no. Nah, I'm buying the present. As an investor, we buy the present. <laughs> we, don't, we don't dwell on their future. We, we dwell on the present. That's a good way to say it. I've never said it that way to you guys. Right. When you hear these CEOs talking, they're always talking about the future. Oh, yes, we're going to be the big banking thing. We're going to be this, this, this. Yeah, well, I look at the present. Right? We're going to do this, that, and the other. We're going to... We're going to change the world, bring world peace. Well, I look at you right now. You don't have one onboarding. That's a lot of yap yap, homeboy. All right, so as an investor, that's what you got to do. Don't focus on the dreams the CEO is selling you. Focus on the here and now of what is happening. All right, but let's move on. But, oh, okay, and so the, I guess the, the final thing I want to say about this thing is that, um, well, you know, Galaxy Digital is run by Mike Novogratz. He was a managing director at one of our top four banks. I don't remember which one. It was either Charles Schwab or J.P. Morgan. So he's a real player. And Bact is also run by ICE, the guys who run the New York Stock Exchange. So... um. I guess what I'm trying to say is if they're still in it, even though their particular companies aren't doing that well, right? Compared to what the expectations were, the fact that they're still here uh, should be good news. You know, I mean, they're market killers. This was going to be a bunch of bullshit that I left a long time ago, right? So, all right, so here we go. Crypto investment firm Galaxy Digital (laughs) and Bitcoin derivatives company backed are teaming up to launch a Bitcoin trading and custody service for institutional investors. We'll see how this works. According to a press release, the platform will target asset managers looking to acquire, build positions in, and store BTC. So you remember we read, um, uh, what was it? Fuck, what's the name of that company? Oh, shit. Hold on. Someone's at my door. One second, one second. I'll be right back. Bang. All right, we're back. All right, good, good, yeah. yeah. Uh, the weed man. We have curfew around nine, so he had to show up a little bit early. <laughs> Brought me a little care package. It's called Gorilla Glue. All right, but let's get back to money. Um, uh, where were we? Um, oh, we were talking about galaxies. All right, right, and backed. So they're teaming up to launch a Bitcoin trading and custody service for institutional investors. So what's good about this is that, um, you know, Bact already has the licensed custody service. So they're not going to have a problem with that. Um, I mean, in the trading, well, it's run by ICE, the guys who run the New York Stock Exchange. So obviously they know <laughs> they know how to run a they know how to run a little trading shop, you know, yeah, just a little exchange. They're familiar so it, in terms of the functionality of this thing that they want to build, uh, there won't be a problem there. The, the, the thing is you got to entice, entice users and investors, right? Entice these institutions. All right, so according to a press release, the, oh, we talked about this. The target will pla- target asset managers looking to acquire, oh, that's what I was talking to you about. Right, and so remember... A little while back, we talked to, um, we talked to, (laughs) we don't talk to anyone here. You know, I have another microphone here. I could do in-house interviews if I wanted. 
Yeah, like this microphone here. I have another one right there. Anyways, um, that'd be funny having Mike Novogratz sitting in here. <laughs> that'd be wild. Yeah, here, smoke this joint, Mike. Elon Musk did it. Come on, brother. <laughs> look, look. Want a little fuel, brother? Look. Oh, yeah, we'd have good times up in this bitch. I'd have fucking Justin Sun in here drinking. Hey, brother, hit that fuel, son. Look, look. <laughs> You're in a safe space here. <laughs> in south beach now boy drinking alcohol that's the water around here all right all right all right back to our, our crypto story guys uh <laughs> so but um so right okay let's get back i'm sorry guys so we read that story about how um i don't remember what company did the survey was it weiss i don't remember but they said that a bunch of asset managers were starting to look at allocating portions of their clients' portfolios in crypto. And and these are the people, as it says right here, that's what they're going to target. They're going to target asset managers. Asset managers. And, yeah, like that's, you know, like I said, that's where it's going to come from. Asset managers, funds, 401ks, all that. All those kind of guys is where we're going to get our our market well every market's built like that so galaxy digital trading gdt galaxy digital's affiliate is providing market access and trading capabilities while the backed warehouse a qualified custodian custodian of bitcoin regulated by the nydfs is safeguarding digital assets for clients so bang bang nydfs approved you all know about our friends at the nydfs so this thing is good to go so this direct connectivity between uh, Galaxy Digital and Bact enables the two companies to offer clients best-in-class efficiency through the entire process of onboarding, trade execution, and storage of the digital of their digital assets. So, one-stop shop, nice and smooth. Galaxy Digital trading head of sales Tim Plakas says the partnership will help both companies meet an increase in demand from high net worth investors, and that's the truth. And that there's an increase in demand. We've talked about that. Uh, we designed this partnership to service the uptick in demand our two firms have received, have received from traditional asset managers seeking asset to physical Bitcoin. So that's the other thing about this thing is that it's going to still do the same kind of thing Bact is doing, offering physical Bitcoins, right? Um, personally, if you, well, I'll just tell you the truth. Why I think backed, the Bact futures aren't successful is because they're physically settled futures. I've told you guys, and look at the CME futures, they're cash settled futures, right? The B CME futures are exploding month after month, record after record. Backed is going nowhere. And it's like I told you, a lot of people, they wanna own the, they wanna make money off the underlying asset, but you don't wanna own that asset, right? Every day I show you my trades. For the past seven weeks, I've been showing you my trades. Yeah, I don't own a yen. I don't own any of those British pounds. I don't own any of those Australian dollars. I'm just making money off the movement. And so a lot of people like that more than why, why do I want to own fucking yen for? I just want to make money off it. And so this thing that these guys are making here, Galaxy Digital and, um, and uh, Backed, it's again, it's going to be for physical Bitcoins. And so physical Bitcoins is good for us because it takes them off the market. But as you can see, the market wasn't so into that, right? They weren't into the backed. The CME futures are going off the charts. The backed ones going nowhere. So, um, but we'll see. I mean, there's more demand and blah, blah, blah. It's, it's all just beginning anyway. So let's just see. These funds expect the same caliber of market knowledge and trade execution expertise in BTC as they would expect from any established traditional finance desk. And Galaxy provides that while back derives the high level of regulatory compliance security right required for storing digital assets. So bang, so we will see this. So, but these are two heavyweights of the crypto market coming together uh, to provide custody and uh, trading. And uh, we'll see, we'll see. I will see how that works. All right, so look, look, bang, let's see what we got here. DP Entertainment, look, look, so brother, let brother, see brother. Bong. I know what this is. I've already seen this. Yes. Coinbase continues to, to explore support for new digital assets 
by Coinbase, BET in their sights. Yes. And so here's the ones they're looking at. There's V Chain right down there in the bottom right. I uh, will see. We will see. Whoops. Sorry, man. I I meant to go. Bye. Thank you, DP. Look, look, Miguel G. Only made this account to follow the best show in the multiverse. Oh, this guy. Yes. Thank you, brother. <laughs> There's a star. Who well, guess who's mine? IOST, V Chain, ADA, AGI, and IOTA. Exactly, baby. Look, brother, you've got the tra you've got the you've got the master. That's the master portfolio right there. That is the master portfolio right there. There is no better portfolio than what you have right there. Look, look, brothers. Look, look, Miguel. Well, you just keep accumulating. Wait for that daggone tsunami. I'm glad you're watching. And uh well, just keep watching and let's keep waiting for the tsunami, brother. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye. Awesome, he made that account just to watch the show. <laughs> I love that. Look, look. All right, who we got? Yeah, drop off. Shut up, bitch. Look, look, bye. Look, look, bye. Look, look, bye. Got you, wrong cares. Uh, yeah, stock market's flying right now, right? Um, Right? Uh, you know, I, 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 I was telling wrong cares the other day. He says he's kind of, it sounds like he's kind of taking his time. But I mean, look at those dips in the market. Think of all the sales. Remember when the Dow was going down 1,000, 1,000, 2,000, 2,000 every single day? About five weeks ago, six weeks ago, right? Yeah. Well, buy the dip, idiot. That's a lot of dips to buy. And so we're seeing the markets roaring back. Um, I'll show you guys right now in the Forex when we get to Sweetie's part. Yeah, it's roaring back. And... Um, uh you know um i don't know i don't know what to say about it um you know we're still you know one thing the fed reserve said today is we're going to see a, a sub a sub 2% inflation for the next 2 years so america's in danger we're still in danger of tipping over into deflationary rate and like what I told you, that's what matters. America's, our problem is deflation, not inflation, gen gentlemen. And so we're still in danger of that. But um, yeah, the market's rip roaring back. Stock market. Um, people are back at work. Walking around, doing stuff. And it uh, looks like this corona thing is dying down. I told you it would. I told you it'd be done by June. You know, May, June. And uh, so... Uh, all right, well, airdrop off. Bye. Yes. I hope you're doing good. Yeah, he's a market killer, right? He's a stock guy. Look, look, Dale Duran. Let your brother see you, brother. Bye. Sloppy. What's sloppy? He said something. We'll probably see it when we do the thing. Let your brother see you, brother. Bye. Burks, big airdrops. Let your brother see you, brother. Bye. Sweetie. Yes. Let your girl see you, girl. Bye. All right. Let's check it out. Bye. All right. Look, look, sweetie. Bye. So. I see you made some money last night, sweetie. I saw you. <laughs> what did you say? You said Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar. Gracias or something like that. <laughs> yes. And someone said, oh, you're multilingual. Anyway, whatever. Um, I entered you into your... Anyway, whatever. Let's look at the trade. So, all right, sweetie. So, and all of you, not just sweetie. I mean, I know I always say sweetie. I got to talk to all of you. And I am talking to all of you. So, we were looking for... so. Uh, so first of all, let me tell you my week. So it's been a fuckery week. I got down because, like I said, I mean, I'm making money, but I'm just saying, I was waiting for the retrace, right? So I bought the retrace and cashed out right here. As you can see, bye, look, look, it still went more. And so you see how we're blow, bro, blowing through the four-hour uh, SMAs? Now I'm going to wait for the bang, the curl to the daily. I'm going to actually short this more. Um, well, if it happens, I mean, we'll see what the market gives us. But the market, as you can see, I took this down, 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 and then it stopped. And then look at this. And then it went down more. And so this part of the trade I missed, I made this money from right here to here. And then I missed all this money from here to here. And I'm still not in it right here. We'll see. 
I might get in. I might get in. Uh, I'm in this piece of shit, am I? Let me look. Am I in that? Hold on, let me look. Oh, all right, I'm not in that. All right, hold on. All right, I'm not in that one. Uh, what am I in? Oh, this shit right here, right. I am in this. And uh, so this is another one, another retrace. Hold on, let me look. So this is another retrace. Um, so you saw how we, so in the four hour, boom, boom, boom. The trend is your friend. Look at that beautiful, nice perpendicular trend lines. Now, I believe we're going to retrace up to the daily. And so I'm going to take a trade today to go up to here. So that's the counter trend trade. So I taught you guys, well, I told you about the theory, not the theory, the, it's not a theory. It's a fucking way things people do it. Counter trend trading. So we always trade with the direction of the trend. But why, why are we going to leave money on the table for the retrace? Like, look at right here. Look at this trend. Look at it go down. Yeah, look at that retrace. Yeah, well, you could have made money on that retrace. Look at that go down. Perfectly to price target. You could have made money, all that money on that retrace. And then look at this one. So I plan on making, bang, all that money on the retrace. So I'm going to counter trend trade the British pound against the Australian dollar tonight, actually. <laughs> tonight. Actually, I wonder, do I have any, a trade in there? Hold on, let me look. I might have even put the entry order in already. Let me look. I don't show you guys my real trading platform. I show you guys my, uh, I just show you a demo account because I don't want hackers seeing my real account here and everything and, I don't know, maybe fucking around or something like that. So I show you guys my, uh, just a demo account, but it's the same data, so it's the same thing. All right. AUD, USD, am I in this? No. But, um, and you can see that one was a daily on the daily. Bang, hit price target. Bang, hit price target. But I expect it to retrace. So I, so basically what I'm going to tell you guys right now is to this week I am going to – I made money at the beginning of the week trading the counter trend trading. Counter trend trading. So trading into the retrace. So I'm going to trade into the retrace all week long is pretty much, I guess, what I should just tell you. Euro NZD, same thing. I'm trading in, I'm in this one right now up. I took it down, made that money. Now I'm going up, trading into the retrace. Same with this British pound one. I don't think I'm in it yet. Am I in it yet? Oh, I am in. Oh, I am in this one. All right, so I'm already in it and I am taking it. Let me see where I am. What? Oh, okay, I see what happened here. Oh, I almost got stopped out last night. Okay, so last night I had actually did take the trade right here. And then you see this red candle. Almost stopped me out, but it didn't. And so I'm taking this to go up. So you see the four hour? Pulse, swing, pulse, swing, pulse, swing, pulse. Now I think we're at the end of the trend and we're going to go to the daily time frame. So I'm, I'm entering right here. And I'm going to ride it all the way up until these SMAs curl down to me, right? Until they curl down to me. All right, so that's enough for the day. Um, sweetie, I'm glad you made some money. Bang, of course. That's the whole point of what the hell I'm talking about. Of <laughs> look, look. She's doing it. So great stuff. Bang. All right. We're back to crypto, are we? Let me make sure you guys can see me. Good. We're back in crypto mode. Back in crypto mode. Crypto mode. Biggie, biggie, biggie in crypto mode. <laughs> when I when I first started this channel, I had a song, Crypto Land, Crypto Land, making all this money in Crypto Land. <laughs> all right, anyways, I was way back at the beginning of the show. That was like probably the first month. I was being real silly. Love you, sweetie. See you, sweetie. Bye. All right. Beautiful brawlies. Where's my daggone umbrellas, boys? Look, look. Love you guys. See you guys. Bye. Edward Dicko and the Dicko family. Family Cryptos together stays together. Bye. Love you, Edward. Bye. Urgh. Mr. Percy Shay Clay. Shay Clay. Love not hate. Interested in tech. Renewed interest in math and software engineering education alts. 
Oh, the ADHD guy. Okay. Look, look, Mr. Percy. Bye. Later, brother. We got bit him. Look, look. Later, brother. See you, brother. Bye. I know he's yappy yapping to me out here already, so we're going to talk to Binium over there. Rob, er, love you, brother. See you, brother. Good conversation we had today. Um, Yeah, I mean, I'm a Forex trader, and I think trading Forex is the easiest thing for a person to trade because everything moves so smoothly. And the other reason is, this might sound a little lazy, but, well, in the New York Stock Exchange, you have 10,000 companies you have to choose from every day. Well, which one's going to move today? Yeah, in the Forex market, I trade the majors. There's only eight. And you make money out of all, is that eight majors? Anyways, I mean, I could trade more. I could trade, obviously, any, most currencies of the world. But I trade the majors. And so that's the easiest thing to trade. And because you're trading countries, well, the data doesn't change so fast. And so that's why you see those beautiful trends like I just showed you. Let me show you guys again. Right, right here. That's why, like in the stock market, you don't see beautiful shit like this. Like this. Where is it? Look at this piece of beauty. Where is it? Right. Look at that. Look at that. Bang! Swing! Bang! Swing! Bang! Swing! Right. It's so orderly. It's called an orderly market because it's so mature and so liquid. And so you asked me, you know, uh, you know, what do I think? You know, because you. You wanted something simple and everything. It doesn't get much more easier than Forex. You know, it doesn't get much more easier. I mean, there's more data we have to follow because we're watching what countries do, right? Not just what a company does. So we're sort of like little mini economists, but, you know, it ain't hard. Uh, you know, once you figure out what news information matters, um, what, what pieces of market data matter, all right, then just follow the data and trade along the fundamentals. Like I'm showing you guys my trades, but it, the trades I'm showing, you know, when you're seeing that, you're just seeing, I'm just showing you the, the sort of the, the technicals of the trade. I mean, I'm not really telling you, I haven't really told you so much why I'm taking those trades. And that's really what happens. I, I you know, as a trader, I choose why I want to make a trade off the fundamental analysis. Then I go into the, the charts right so i'm just showing you the end result of after all the research i've done when you're seeing these trades that's just the end result right when i go to forex factory and all that i'm looking at you know you know like this i'll show you like you know we're doing our analysis right this is my analysis daily so i'm looking at cpi numbers i'm looking at fomc statements I mean, obviously, today was the the American uh, Federal Reserve Fund's uh, numbers, right? So these are the numbers I look at. Then from my analysis of what these numbers are saying, that's when I go into the charts. So you're just seeing the end result of how a trade happens. A trade happens here first with the data. You see this data? That's where trades begin. You don't just fucking open up a chart and think you're going to fucking just make money. I mean, you get lucky a few times but you see how i am how i kill it eight out of ten times yeah that's because the data you have to know fundamental analysis and so um okay so oh i started talking to this guy i got off track i was talking to rob Ert. and so rob Ert, i would suggest uh forex and like i said like forex factories right here it's such a great tool there it is there's all the numbers there are all the numbers and they you see the time at 8.30, yeah, well, we get those numbers the exact same time Wall Street does here on Forex Factory. Yeah, Forex gets the numbers, we get, uh, sorry, Wall Street gets the numbers, we get the numbers. So they don't have a um, an informational advantage over us, okay? Um, so that's why I tell everyone to trade Forex, plus it's cheap to get in. To be a Forex trader, it's cheap. Yeah, to be a stock trader, well, you need fucking, look, you millions of dollars, dude. To actually be like really successful and make a living, you need money, lots. To be a forex trader, you don't need a lot. Um, and I mean, depending on what country you're in, you know your leverage. Like here in America, we have fifty to one leverage. I know in Europe, you guys are still rocking hundred to one leverage. So you guys are making double the. If you make the same trade as me, 
I'm here in America and a European makes the exact same trade I do, yeah, he earns double the money that I make here. Um, all right, guys, I know you guys are you're here for crypto. Let's so let's get back to crypto. But he just asked me, you know, what what I, I think you should get into. And uh, you know, it's not that I'm a forex trader that I tell you, it's because it's it's the cheapest. It's the cheapest and it's the most smooth. Look at those trends. Like it's just smooth. It's no brainer. It's 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 not rocket science what I'm doing. Right? Uh so all right, Robert. That's enough for today. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye. Brent says, bye, lady. Love you, lady. See you, lady. Bye. God dang yes. Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye. JP Visa. Look, look. The Pasqua Yaki tribe. Look, look. V chain killers. Look, look. V chain masters. Look, look. V chain hodlers. Look, look. V chain dominators. Look, look, chief. <laughs> Love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye. Yeah, the chief got me hyped there. Yeah, yeah, I told you about the chief. Yeah, he works in like finance. Not finance or something. He, he's got like retirement funds or something he sells people. Or 401ks. He gets them to flip their 401ks to his thing or something like this. I don't know. He, he's one of these kind of guys. He's the kind of guy that you'll see in the Fidelity Kill Zone. <laughs> For those of you who remember the Fidelity Kill Zone story, well, that's chief. He brings you into his kill zone. He's got his nice shiny degree. Hold on, let's even blow Chief's head up right here. He's got his nice shiny, shiny degree right here. And then you know what he has in the kill zone. He's got a picture of his wife and kids over here. Oh, yeah, smiling and happy. And then he's got a picture of himself right there with a big old fish. Him and his buddies in the lake. Yeah, fuck yeah, with a big old fish. When you bring soccer mom and dad into that kind of thing, oh, yeah. they're dead. They see that he's smart. They see he's a good family man. And soccer dad sees that big old fish and he's jealous. So he's going to sign up for whatever Chief has. <laughs> look, look, Chief. Set up that kill zone appropriately. Bye. Love you, brother. All right, let's move on. Red Scanner. Love you, brother. Bye. I'm in a talkative mood today. I think it's because I was in such a bad mood of missing all that money this week. Oh, Lee. You know, as a trader, hold on. Let me just give one more and then bang. And then let me just show one more thing, though. As a trader... All right, guys, I kill trades every week. I mean, you guys see that. I show you them all the time. So as a tra as a guy like me, I'm not angry when I lose a trade. All right, 2% per trade. I don't give a fuck. I am angry when I do dumb shit, when I do shit like this. This is the trade I got in right up here. Cashed it out right here on the 50 was my price target. But then look how much I lost. Look how much. Well, why didn't you get back in? Yeah, because I thought it was going to go out. I thought it was going to go up, so I didn't get back in. And look how much I missed. That's what you get angry at as a fucking real trader is it's not the fucking losses. The losses are fucking nothing. If you do proper account management, all right, that's 2% per trade. What really pisses you off is missing all that fucking money, and I missed a bunch of money. And so, But I'm in a glad mood now talking to you guys, so look. Ricardo Tuto, love you, brother. See you, brother. Bye. Look, look, bye. Look, look, bye. Oh, here's what Sloppy said. You've got a hurricane of V-Chain due in the front, <laughs> doing from the east. Well, I daggone hope so. Oh, I daggone hope so, brother. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Fuck. Daggone hope so. Well, there ain't no hope about it. V-Chain's a... V chain's a killer. As soon as these guys can get their hands on it, what do you think they're gonna buy? That's gonna be first. Iota number two. <clears throat> That's guaranteed. Bitcoin and Ethereum, number one, number two. And in terms of small caps, <laughs> V chain and Iota, number three, number four. That's what these guys are gonna be rocking and rolling on first. You'll see. And then you know, right? I have a thing for you. I have a thing for you guys tomorrow about V chain. You'll see. Uh, but let's just stick with today. Binium, look, look, CB News. All right, Binium, what am I looking at? CB News. Ethereum 2.0 charges ahead with new Onyx testnet launch. All right. All right, so they're still bringing in this 2.0 thing. Look, look, great. I didn't read about it. I don't know really what, I don't have anything to say about it. So, bang, good news, though. P progress, progress. It shows progress. CB News, what, Binium? IOST in a Japanese, whoops, medical health tech venture, Prax. To power medical record platform by iost token nice 
Nice. Uh, I did read that. Um, they're partnering together to try. Remember, remember what I told you yesterday? To try to be a successful medical record platform. Uh, they want to create a platform. Now, how many people are going to use it? And that's what matters. Remember what I told you guys yesterday? Don't listen to when uh, uh, when these these companies talk. They speak as if it's already happened, right? As if they know the future. Yes, guys, we're going to do this, 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 this. Fuck that. You don't know that that's going to happen, right? Uh, you don't know what's going to happen. And so, you know, did Boeing know that their 737 jet was going to crash and kill 500 people? <laughs> now they're fucking almost bankrupt, right? You don't know what's going to happen. So don't listen to what companies say. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to do that. That's your aspiration. I don't give a fuck about your dream. What are you doing? I give a fuck about the here and now, not the future. I invest in the now, not the future. Um, all right. So anyways, look, look, Edwin, Larry Brother, see Brother, bang. And Bitcoin, Kong, one more last one. I'd recover good way, Donna. Kong. <laughs> wow. Larry Brother, see you, Brother. Bang. All right. Bang. Let's get back here to the. Bye. Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody. Wait, are we back? Wait a minute. Oh, we are back. Oh, my bad. Why isn't it showing it down here? Oh, my bad. We were back. Oh, man. I hope my buttons didn't fuck up, and I hope this thing went smoothly. All right. Well, we're at the end now, so this is it. We're going we're gonna to clean this thing up, and we're going to recall it a day. <laughs> so look, look. So we had a great show for you today, folks. Bye. So we talked about the Bitcoin Bitfury offering a fund just for Bitcoin mining. And so, like I said, I thought that was kind of interesting in that, you know, any other asset class, you either buy the thing or you don't, right? But Bitcoin has this kind of extra piece, the miners. Oh, we can make money off those guys too. And uh, I don't know, from a market perspective, from an investor perspective, I wonder, you know, if you're investing in the mining, are the mining prices as volatile as real Bitcoin? You know, Bitcoin up, down, fucking $500,000 a day. Or are the mining prices more of a gradual, real, like sort of like a normal corporation, right? They just kind of go up slowly kind of thing right interesting interesting and uh so just another way to make money though as an investor that's what i like you know avenues to put my money in and suck money back out right and so which is the point of investing and so so interesting investment vehicle and then grayscale oh this thing so grayscale offers ethereum at a 700 percent premium Doc. I just don't know for like I like I said I don't know how you have the balls to even <laughs> offer that and then I don't know why the fuck these people are buying that I mean what the fuck what the fuck and so um I guess what I'm saying is just as a market guy this is a shock to my psyche I've never seen anything like this. I've never heard of anything like this. I mean, unless it's some sort of scam, you know, where someone is saying to you, you know, like a Ponzi scheme, you know, buy this and we'll give you 700% return. Okay, Ponzi schemes. I've heard of those. Oh, fuck, they're, they're, they're a dime a dozen. Ponzi schemes are a dime a dozen. But this isn't a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> it's not. Not only that, Grayscale has bought more Bitcoins since the halving than all the Bitcoins mined. Not only that, they have bought, what was it? Half of all Ethereum mined this year. Of all the Ethereum in the world mined this year, that one company, Grayscale, bought it. Since the halving of all the Bitcoins, they have bought more than all the Bitcoins mined and then some. We read about it already, right? We didn't read about the Ethereum part. That's a new one today. So... I guess what I'm saying is, or what I'm thinking is, I 
I mean, those boys must be brewing up something good over there. I mean, to buy all this Bitcoin and all this Ethereum and, and, and to charge 700% and yet your people do it? What are you telling a person? Like, from my perspective, I look at it as this. What would it take? What would it take for someone to convince me to pay 700 times what I should pay for an asset? <laughs> you know what I mean? What would it take you to do that? What are you saying to them that's saying that they go, oh, oh, this is the deal? This is the plan? Oh, sure, I'll take it. Do you understand what I'm saying, guys? I'm confused. I don't know. And it's bothering me because something's going on over there. Something is going on deep in the bowels of grayscale. And there's some institutional investors who are feeling it and willing to pay 700 fucking percent more. So I don't have an answer. Like I said, as a market person, I've been in markets for 20 fucking years. I have never ever once in my entire life seen anything close to something like this unless it was a Ponzi scheme or they were ripping off, you know, senior citizens for their pension check. So if anyone has an answer, please do tell because I would like to know. All right. So let's just end that one there. Bang. Grayscale. How do they get away with that? Why are they paying that? I want to know what's going on in there. Why are you willing to pay 700%? All right. All right. And so let's move on. And then finally, Galaxy Digital and Bact are going to offer custody and trading. So um, as I said, you know, Bact performance has been a little mediocre. But I mean, they're still backed by ICE, the guys who run the New York Stock Exchange. So I mean, <laughs> they have long money. They're, you know, uh, I'm not worried about them going out of business or anything like that. And, uh, you know, Galaxy Digital had a rough year last year. Uh, blah, blah, blah. And so they're teaming up, but they're both licensed. They're regulated and all that. And so this new product, I mean, I noticed that they didn't tell us the name of this new thing. What is it going to be? You know, what is it going to call? Uh, Galaxy Backed or something? I don't know. But Backed Galaxy? I don't know. But um, we'll just see how it works. And I hope it works out better. I hope it works out good. Um, Again, again. Like I said, it's for physically settled uh, Bitcoin, and yeah, a lot of people don't want physically settled Bitcoin. All those trades I showed you, yeah, I don't own any of those yen. I don't own any of those British pounds, right? I don't own any of those New Zealand dollars. I just make the money off the moves of them, right? And so, I don't know, guys. So, strange day. Not our usual stuff, but I hope you had fun. hope you enjoyed it. So, let's chill it and kill it, and let's get you back to your wives and lives. So, bang, subscribe below. Press the bell. You get an automatic notification when I do the show. The greatest show on earth. Greatest show. In the multiverse. <laughs> look, look. My name's Shamar Clock. Love talking money. Love talking crypto. Bye. This is the favorite time of my day. So look, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you for having me in your home. And I will see you guys tomorrow. And uh, until then, look, look. Invest wisely. Look, look. Watch the money. And look, look. Subscribe here. Look, look. Watch that video. Look, look. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. My name's Shamar Clark. I'm always on duty. Bye. Watching our money. You dag on right. Over and out.